After a decade or so of production, Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves has finally released at an interesting time. The film, which is of course loosely adapting the classic tabletop RPG of the same name, finds itself in theaters at the same time as the Super Mario Bros. movie, a few short weeks after HBO's The Last of Us took the television world by storm. Game adaptations have perhaps never been so culturally prevalent, but as the mixed reception of the Mario movie, as the online backlash to that reception, and as a few other other projects within recent memory have demonstrated, the question of how to successfully go about adapting a game, how to translate something from an active medium to a passive one, remains an open one. And while it certainly hasn't single-handedly closed that question, I think this new D&D film has maybe come nearer than anything else. It really succeeds as a film, but more importantly, I think it really succeeds as an adaptation. And paradoxically, this success is due in large part to the film focus on failure. To explain that a little, let me tell you a story. I'm not much of a D&D guy myself, but I have played it, or its derivatives, a couple of times in my life, and I still remember my last session quite vividly, because it was a disaster. We weren't too far into the campaign, this was more a preliminary adventure than the main event, I think, but our party's task was to infiltrate a fancy soiree in order to gather some information crucial to our eventual heist. At first, everything went swimmingly. The dice smiled upon us that day, but as we were finishing up, some prince or other in the city's royal family was arriving. Now, I was playing an assassin, and this assassin had some sort of tragic backstory, the details of which elude me, this was years ago, mind, but part of that backstory was that my assassin blamed the rich, the powerful, and above all else, the royals for what had befallen him. My assassin was only doing any of this to weaken the establishment, to further his own radical republican mission. But like Oliver Cromwell style radical republicanism, not that current brand of white boomer fascist. Anyway, based on the character I'd been given, I had to do something. My other party members just wanted to get out of there, regroup, move on, but I was devoted to the role-playing aspect of the game, dammit, so I decided my character wasn't leaving this town hall without taking a crack at the prince. I clambered up into the rafters, took out a vial of poison I'd acquired a while back, and rolled to drip a splash of it into the prince's goblet far beneath me. That was the moment the dice stopped smiling on me critical failure, the rafters gave way, and my character fell, poison in hand, to land injured at the feet of the prince and his retinue. Next, I rolled to try and stab the bastard there and then. It was a two or something, so my guy lost the fight. My party had tried and failed to help, so last, I just rolled to run away. Another freakishly bad number, another critical failure, and hey presto, the collapsed chandeliers set the wooden floor alight, and so on. To cut a long, depressing story short, we went from a flawless, undetected victory to a burned downtown hall, a city on high alert, alert, and an assassin on death's door. We never finished that campaign. This was the last year of sixth form, so what with the revision, the relationships, the underage drinking, time was short, and trying to salvage a campaign I'd royally botched wasn't really at the top of anyone's list of priorities. I wouldn't have had it any other way, though. That whole mess was, by a country mile, the worst part of the experience, but it was also the most memorable, the most fun. It was fun in a peculiar, unique, haphazard way, a precise way I hadn't felt again, not exactly, anyway. That is, until I saw this film. Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves is all about failure. What is it exactly that you bring to this? I'm a planner. I make plans. You've already made the plan, so... If the existing plan fails, I make a new plan. From the very start, failure is what drives this movie forward. The meat of the opening prison sequence, the mechanism through which the film's basic backstory and setting exposition is delivered, Edgin's attempt to secure a pardon, only happens because Jonathan, their feathery ticket out, didn't turn up on time. Everything we see in the process, the first lavish glimpse of Faerun, Chris Pine's weaselly, shifty performance, every memorable part of this opening segment is an accident, is a pivot. And that's a pattern that continues throughout. Going to meet Forge and Kira at Castle never turns into a scene of betrayal, and a narrowly dodged execution. The attempt to recruit Simon the Sorcerer goes similarly awry, as does Doric's castle infiltration attempt, and ditto with the corpse questioning, the bridge in the Underdark, and so forth. At its core, this film's story is a simple one. Edigan's trying to reunite his family, get his daughter back, that never changes. What turns this simple into an epic story is the one step forward, two steps back 
back of it all. The one small favor effect. The fact that things go wrong, and then the backup plan goes wrong, and on and on. Even before the low point, the heart to heart in the second act where it's all made rather explicit, it's clear that failure, that moments like these, are the film's center. And that there's a type of joy the film finds in scrambling away from catastrophe, a wild, exuberant glee in things going wrong, in the dice coming up snake eyes, and in the desperate efforts of our characters to stay afloat in the ensuing chaos. At one point, in one mess or another, Edgin tries to reassure the group, saying, This is what we do. We pivot. But there's a way in which the we here goes beyond his party, goes beyond simply this film's cast of characters. That we includes every D&D character, every D&D player, because my fondly remembered D&D disaster is not remotely unique. Every other D&D player I've spoken to has at least one story like mine, an unforgettable memory of a time when things went wrong, staggeringly wrong, and it took all their skill, willpower, and luck to salvage anything of the situation. Failure and the subsequent pivot, hitting rock bottom and bouncing back, that is fundamental to the Dungeons & Dragons experience, and the film gets this. The film is all about this. Aren't you sick of failing, a character asks Edgen, as it looks like all hope is lost? His answer is every viewer's answer, every D&D player's answer. No, of course not. How could you ever get sick of this? When people talk about adaptation, they talk a lot about the importance of spiritual accuracy. Some divergences from the plot, the setting, the backstory, these are forgivable if the adaptation is faithful in spirit. And while this can be a useful concept, it's very subjective and almost impossible to define or quantify. So I'm not going to say that this joyous embrace of failure shows Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves capturing the spirit of the game and its world. That may well be true, but I want to make a slightly more tangible claim. I think Jonathan Goldstein and John Francis Daly, the writer-director duo, identified the ludic essence of its source material and built their film around it. The feeling of playing the game is utterly central here, and the film never loses sight of it. And while this focus on failure might be the major, or at least the most interesting example of this adaptive dynamic of translating not just the story of the game, but the feel of playing it, it's not the only one. No, let's talk briefly about character. The film has a lot of fun action, some really neat effects, humour that lands way more often than not, but for my money, the thing that really grounds all of this, the reason this feels like a great film instead of a collection of fun moments and gags, is the rock-solid character work on display. Sure, it's not flashy, it doesn't ever really surprise, it's not exactly a slow, deep character study, but all of the main cast are fully realised. All of them have tangible, affecting arcs. Edgen is a real, tragic character. He is a good man, but there's just this touch of greed, and without spoiling too much, we see throughout the film that ultimately this is to blame. He is to blame for the awful fate that just about ruined his life. That flaw is still here, a decade or so later, and his story here is the story of him facing it down. Holger's a barbarian who took family for granted, and in doing so, lost it. Her journey here is fighting to build, or rebuild rather, another family, and reach out, actually embrace it. Simon and Doric don't receive quite this level of focus, but still, all of the sorcerer's actions are made against the weight of his own self-doubt, Doric's against her distrust, her struggle toward vulnerability. Our main cast never comes close to feeling interchangeable or skin deep, and it's always clear why choices are made, why this character can or can't do that thing. Story follows character, and in subtle ways, then more obviously toward the end, character follows story. This might sound basic, and maybe it is, but it's foregrounded here, way more than is typical in the action-adventure genre. And I'm not alone in contending this. A recent article from Polygon talks effusively about the role of downtime in the film, the significance of the scenes that let characters breathe, the scenes that let us see what drives them, and maybe more to the point, how these parts evoke those crucial moments of memorable roleplay interaction you get in RPGs. I think that's bang on, but I think the RPG-ness here goes beyond 
beyond those moments of downtime, and that like that failure we discussed above, the film's sense of character can be understood as part of its process of adaptation. When I wrecked that campaign, all those years ago, when my assassin ruined the mission to take an ill-fated crack at a prince, it wasn't because I got bored, and it wasn't because I wanted to watch the world burn. It was because that's what my character would have done. My actions were dictated by his traits, his wants, his needs, his flaws. When you play a game like D&D, action follows character directly, and it really feels like this simple fact was always firmly in mind during this film's production. That solid character focus makes for an engaging experience, but maybe just as importantly, it makes this feel like a tabletop campaign filmed. Look, there's a lot of good stuff on display here. The stacked cast, all taking their roles seriously. The magic that's actually magic, not grids and lasers, and that looks amazing. The pretty large amount of genuine laughs you get from all this. Even the really fun marketing. Tapson, my beloved. All this absolutely deserves praise, and I'd love to see more of these films, whether continuing with these characters or more standalone. But for my money, the most interesting part of Honor Among Thieves is the way it translates that ludic essence, the feel of playing Dungeons and Dragons, in this emphasis on failure and character. And given the cultural moment the film's released in, given the renewed attention given to games and game adaptations in the biz, I think that success has come at a useful time, because it's become clear that even if focusing on that essence, that feel of playing, may not be the way to adapt a game, some foolproof formula for cinematic success, it is certainly a way. A way that really worked here. So let's thank character, let's thank failure for success, and I'll also thank you for watching. I know a bunch of my regular viewers were probably hoping that the Moon Knight retrospective would be out next, not this. Awfully sorry, but that is coming soon, so stick around. If you want to help a fella out, drop a like, a comment mayhaps, and on the off chance anyone watching has recently completed a grand heist and has a lot of gold to dispose of, Patreon link's right there, just saying. Shout out to all my current supporters, especially Daniel Goldhorn, Heather Long, Ryan Emily, and Weirdy Beardy, and I'll be back soon with more banger content. Take care.